we'd like to demonstrate some rock concepts with big band. One problem that we often hear is that the rhythm section gets very dense, it gets very loud, and everybody's overplaying. So it might sound something like this. One, two, three. There's no way that that would work with the band, and what it would really do is force the band to play very, very loud. And again, that's what often happens on rock charts. They're just loud all of the time. This band, uh, if they were to play loud with no energy and, and blow off the articulation combined with this rhythm section, it would sound a bit like this. So we'll just give them a little bit of not the greatest rock sound. Here we go. One, two, three. Unfortunately, we've driven the dynamics and the volume to a kind of an unbearable level right from the beginning. So let's go about fixing this real quick. First of all, a lot of these rock tunes, in my opinion, start with bass and drums, and specifically bass. So I'd like Connor to play his bass part, and which, to make it really work, it's going to have some space in it, and it's also going to have articulation in it. So it can't just be busy, busy, busy. And there's also going to be a word that we mentioned earlier, repetition. So Connor, would you? Fantastic. So that will really let the drummer build something on that. So the concept that I use with a rhythm section in rock music is that we kind of stack parts on that. There are two different concepts we can use with the piano and the guitar. One concept is where they actually duplicate the parts. So guys, could you give us an example of that? So one, two, three. <laughs> Another concept would be where the piano plays pads or chords and the guitar goes to more of a muted string or single note line to really add to the rhythm. Can you give us an example of that? Finally, the drums, we're going to put our part in the middle of all this and make it work first with the bass and then with everyone else. Let's do the whole rhythm section. So one, two. So here's the whole band playing a rock chart, but please make note of the simplicity of the drum part. What it's really going to be focused on is two and four backbeats and really a pretty simple bass drum part. I'm not trying to fill it up, I'm not trying to confuse everybody, and I'm not trying to, to, to play my favorite licks. All I'm trying to do is work with the bass and provide an engine for the band to uh, make it feel good and we're going to help the soloist go. So here we go. So one, two.
much like a jazz chart, the drummer uses his cymbals to help orchestrate the tune. This particular tune started off on a tight hi-hat, and then it moved up to the dome cymbal on the bridge. Um, much later in the chart, it moved to the china for offbeats. It certainly used the crash cymbals on the big accents with the band. Now, this just isn't a drum issue. The rhythm section makes these modifications at every section of the tune as well. Let's start with Connor, and he can show us what he played at the bridge of the tune. Can you play what you, uh, what you play at 48 later on in the tune? Now he's going to kind of echo what the band's doing. There couldn't be a better definition of the word teamwork than a rhythm section in a rock chart. Everybody has to do their part, and they have to really work together. It starts with drums and bass aligning their intensity levels and their ideas, and the bass drum and the bass part. And then, of course, we stack the piano and the guitar on top of that to make this very unified yet moving forward feel. 